a woman of society such as myself views everything in terms of relationships, you know? One might wonder about a possible relationship between the defendant and this coroner woman. Oh gosh. Or perhaps between the defendant and the handsome prosecutor just there. Oh my god. <laughs> Yowie! The Yowie is strong with this one. There's no doubt in my mind that the professor case is at the heart of a link that we have yet to uncover. Between Dr. Courtney Scythe and Mr. Enoch Drebber. They're lovers, aren't they? No, no, they're not. Ooh, what is up, ladies and gentlemen? I am the Story Driven Gamer, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we are hopping back into the Great Ace Attorney 2 Resolve. In the last episode, we began the second trial for the case number three. We were, I feel like we're about halfway through the game, or maybe a little bit more at this point. Um, but yeah, it's, it's heating up, it's getting good. Last episode was spent primarily figuring out the trick behind um, Mr. Asman's death. You know that there was like a magic uh, trickery going on here. So we concluded that that there were two quote unquote Mr. Asmans. One, which is what we discovered last trial, you know, that we thought we thought that Mr. Asman himself, you know, was hidden in the balloon. The balloon exploded and he fell through the crystal tower. But I don't think we've gotten there yet, but it seems very likely that that's the mannequin. In fact, we've already revealed that a mannequin was involved. So yeah, that was the mannequin. Because we know we found a uh, that glass shard from the crystal tower window in the mannequin's uh, jacket. <laughs> but what happened to the real Mr. Asman is the, um, you know, he was in the cage, in the machine. And when the explosion occurred, the, the bottom of the machine opened up and he fell through the tower the same, the same amount, 30 feet. And hit the bottom. So that's basically what happened. Um, I fumbled a little bit along the way. I still stand by the fact that I was um, was on it from the get-go. At least that part of it. You know, I presented this picture, which I think was cl was clear enough that you is a giant hole in the machine that he would have fallen through. But the game wanted me to present the uh, the diagram and then select on the diagram the exact location on the tower. So it felt like it was just kind of a needlessly roundabout way. And then after we did all that, Rienoski just presented the picture anyway and was like, see, there's a hole. And I'm like, that's what, that's what I was trying to say from the start. But that's that's how it goes sometimes. Um, other than that, I think I did very well. Um, oh, yeah, we we named um, Courtney Scythe as a possible accomplice, which, uh, which makes sense because she could have uh, messed with the coroner's report. But they also brought up the fact that, obviously, she, you know, when these incidents occurred, she, you know, cordoned off the, the, the crime scene from everybody and, like, only my investigative team can uh, access this. So she was able to switch the body, basically, you know, so she was able to take the, um, the mannequin that fell through the crystal tower and, I guess, replace it with Mr. Asman's actual body. Um, so, yeah, we, ha we, um, we just found that out towards the end. So we haven't talked to her yet or called her as a witness. But, even with all this uh, evidence, the um, jury is still ready to uh, find um, Hairbrain guilty anyway. So, we're doing another, um, what do you call it, summation examination, and that's where we left off. So, here we go. The juror's contentions. I've known that woman for years. She's never been accomplished to anything. Okay, buddy. Okay. It's utter nonsense to think those two would ever be conniving with one another. Oh, dear. This is, my, this is most troubling, but surely the waxwork the man stole has nothing to do with the coroner, is it? Hmm, not so sure about that. I have had my own problems with members of the police. I do not trust them much. I've seen no rigorous proof that this waxwork was ever inside the bird case. It's conjecture. Accusing someone without right evidences? He's not a proper job, is he? I won't have it. That's my angry face. Grr. Okay, they all seem on her side, for whatever reason. Somewhat unsurprisingly. I mean, I guess it makes sense they would be, right? Like, she's, she's like, the expert. They have no reason to doubt her. It seems the introduction of this waxwork model to the proceedings has polarized opinion. Given that its face is obscured, and its build is in no way resembles that of the victim. Oh yeah, and we got this guy. Obviously, obviously, no, I'm not talking about Van Zyke's. 
His master apprentice there. I can only applaud my learned friend's tem temerity at suggesting it as Mr. Asman's body double. Yes, it looks nothing like him, but it doesn't have to. It just has to be a body. Yes, the applause is deafening. And yes, I know it seems extraordinary. But you gotta believe me. But that's the point. That's why I have a strong feeling it's actually a greater clue than anyone yet realizes. It's kind of funny how many uh, cases throughout the uh, Ace Attorney series are like, quote-unquote, like, magic tricks. <laughs> you know? But it makes sense. Um, you know, magic tricks, that's like the whole goal is of a magic trick is to kind of visually pull one over on the audience. So it's kind of a fun, it's a fun thing to pull apart and actually figure out, you know, what the reality behind, sorry, the reality behind the rouge. You know what I mean? Or the ruse. How do you say that word? <laughs> What are you thinking, Mr. Narahodo? I can't explain why at the moment, but I feel as though there's a specific reason why it was used. Why it had to be this model. Really? A reason why nothing else would do, you mean? Yes. And I'm convinced. It's something far more significant than whether or not the model looked like the victim. Hmm. Well, if that's the case... We must pre prevent the trial from ending prematurely at all costs. You, yes, agreed. Otherwise, we're screwed. I have to find a way out of this. If you are ready, Council, you may proceed with the summation examination. Yes, my lord. Right away, my lord. Oh boy. Look at look at freaking um, Enoch Drever in the background there. Okay. So let's see if anything stands out that I want to press on or present anything to. Oh, sorry, we're supposed to pit, pit two of them against each other. Okay. So I do not think the two would ever be conni uh, conniving with one another. <laughs> Canoodling with one another. Okay, that seems significant since he's talking about the waxwork. Uh, I've had members of, members of the police. I do not trust them. No proof that the waxwork was ever inside the birdcage. Okay, I feel like these two, his and the lady, both have to do with the waxwork. So let's press those first. Why would you assume that? Well, quite simply because that unsettling swindler has no relation with the woman, does he? True, as it stands, we don't know of any connection. Oh gosh, but it would be delightfully romantic if they were somehow to have a mutual interest in the waxwork. Romantic? A woman of society such as myself views everything in terms of relationships, you know? Okay, settle down, lady. This isn't one, this isn't one of your fan fictions. Well, you learn something new every day. Even if you don't want to. <laughs> TMI, TMI. One might wonder about a possible relationship between the defendant and this coroner woman. Oh gosh. Or perhaps between the defendant and the handsome prosecutor just there. Oh my god. <laughs> Yowie! The Yowie is strong with this one. This woman. Maybe more astute than I've been giving her credit for. If that's the woman's stance, then perhaps demonstrating some connection between the waxwork and Dr. Scythe would be enough. Yes, I agree. As soon as we have even a whiff of a connection, she'll be the first to know. I'll beat her over the head with it. So like I said, I feel like we're probably going to use the glass shard at some point. A small fragment of very unusual and thick glass that was found in the folds of the clothing of the Professor Waxwork. It would appear to be from the Crystal Tower. Now that doesn't connect um, the Waxwork to Miss Scythe, but it connects the Waxwork to, obviously, the Crystal Tower. Okay, let's press this guy. Hold it, sir. But you claim the whole instantaneous kinesis demonstration was a trick. That's what I did. But there's more than one way to pull a rabbit out of a hat, isn't there? True enough. Sorry. <laughs> I grant you, given this cage appeared from a an explosion, there would have been no need to use a real person. 
But if a waxwork had been used, the corporal could at least have had the decency to make it look like the victim. I'm not sure exactly how much criminals are governed by decency. <laughs> the point is, if you're going to make a claim about that waxwork being inside the birdcage, you need to give us some evidence. Without that, it's just not science. I suppose we should expect nothing less than a logical argument from a fellow of the Royal Society. But that perhaps means his mind could be changed if we manage to present suitable evidence. Evidence that the Professor Waxwork was inside that birdcage. Hmm. Can I produce that or not? Okay, I think that's where the glass shard comes in, right? I'm gonna go with it. I have nothing. Now I have evidence. Actually, I have something I'd like you to see, sir. Oh, I doubt it. I must warn you that I firmly believe it's only wise to trust men in white coats. Or women in white coats. So, given your jet black outfit, I don't mind admitting to a sense of trepidation here. Hey, what's wrong with black? So you don't trust anyone in black? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, looking in the mirror must be very trying. I mean, look at Organization 13. You can't trust any of them. Okay. It's gotta be the glass shard, right? Take that. Take that! What's that? A piece of glass? That, though it's unusually thick for glass. Yes, it's a piece of broken glass that we found inside the jacket on the waxwork. As you say, it's not ordinary glass, though. It's very thick and clearly made for extra strength. Much like the special glass that was developed for the construction of the Crystal Tower. Owned. The Crystal Tower? Holy smoke sausage! Exactly, the centerpiece of the Great Exhibition, where the very incident we're talking about took place. On the day in question, the birdcage fell from above and smashed through a window of that special glass. From whence the small piece originated? Is that it? That is it, sir. Precisely. So, what do you say? And what say you? Now that clear evidence in support of the assertion has been placed before you, What say you, sir? Well, as I said, I only trust men in white coats as a rule. However, I'll make an ex exception. When the reasoning is sound, it's fair to say color shouldn't come into it. Yeah. In light of what you've shown me here, yes, I feel obliged to change my position on the matter. Yay, that's one, da that's one person. In that case, juror number four, you will amend your statement now, please. The presence of that piece of glass leaves me in little doubt that the waxwork was indeed inside that birdcage. Okay. We still don't have that connection though. Now oh, wait a minute. I know it seems a little far-fetched to think that the waxwork model of the professor was in that birdcage. But on the other hand, it explains a lot. If there really is a reason why that particular waxwork had to be used as Mr. Asman's double, we must do everything we can to make the jurors understand it. The truth is, I'm sure that's the key to this, but it's the most puzzling part of it, too. In that case, you should see what additional information you can glean while trying to change the jurors' minds. If you can read a book whilst eating a rice cracker, Mr. Narahodo, I'm sure you can do this. <laughs> okay. Right, yes. Whatever that means, I'll do it. Okay, so it sounds like we should start by gathering inf as much information as we can first. Um, should we just go down the, the row? Yeah, just, let's just go in order. Because I don't see anything yet. Um, the order of things seems to have changed around here for some reason. I'm a copper lad. It's a corporate discretion to bend the rules sometimes when needs must. What's wrong with that? Uh, <laughs> everything. Where do I start? I've been working at the yard for 40 odd years. That's even more than I thought. Old geezer. We've only had a metro metropolitan police service in town for 70 years, you know. Of course, times have changed. The public didn't trust coppers back when I started. It was rough. We had to fight crime, and we had to fight to win the public's trust as well. And when we did. 
forensic science was in its infancy too. Even more than it is now. I would imagine. <laughs> it's not even mainstream now, and you said, what, 40 years ago? And she spearheaded the revolution. Oh, Courtney? Dr. Scythe, you mean? That's right. About 10 years ago now it was, when I was still the youngest Bobby on the beat. That's when she started making a name for herself as a top class coroner. And now look at her, head of the forensic investigation team. I'm so proud. And a woman, no less. Can you believe it? Well, you won't hear me complaining. It's what we all dreamt of back then, I tell you. I am progressive. Could you tell me without holding that gun in the air, please? We were all out to uphold justice, lad. Full of vim, we were. Full of vim and vigor. That's coming across loud and clear. Very loud. Okay, so I do not think those two would ever be conniving with one another. Just press him on that. <laughs> but only just trying to understand this case. Sorry, what did you say? I wasn't listening. What, what are you reading there, sir? The man behind those murders in Solar Pond Street was caught in two days flat. That's real policing for you. That's really not relevant to this case, is it? Is that the same paper, though, that we uh, that we have in our evidence? You're wrong there. Because it was Dr. Scythe in charge of examining the bodies. And it was evidence arising from her work that led to the arrest of the scoundrel responsible. Oh. That's right. Oh, that woman is at the forefront of this country's fight against crime. The idea that she's somehow involved in this murky business is a load of old tosh. Tosh, I tell you. I thought it was up to me to press the jurors, not the other way around. Okay, I'm not getting much. Okay, I already talked to you. Okay, he's the one who talked about the police, and we have the police guy down there. What sort of problems? Let's just say we have run into each other on numerous occasions while I've been performing on the street. Right, I see. Obviously, artists such as myself cannot appear on stage as we work in close proximity to our audiences. So we perform our great magic in parks, on street corners and the like. But the police use any excuse to make our lives difficult. I had a feeling you'd have something to say. Uh, pursue. Excuse me. Slam. Do you have something to say in response to that, Mr. Ottermole? Who are you calling a mass murderer? Ah, sorry, my mistake. I, I got confused because I heard you look like him. Oh boy, this is awkward. I don't look anything like the man. You want to be locked up, Sonny? Thanks, Mr. Sholmes. <laughs> Perhaps we can move on. I was really wondering if you had something you wanted to add in response to what juror number three just said. And clearly you do. I'm gonna shoot him. Back in my day. Back in the good old days. It wasn't like this. What was it like, sir? We worked our fingers to the bone to earn the public's trust we did. And by Jove, we earned it. People respected us back then. Respected you? Humph. No one would have called a coroner into question in them days. A coroner's report was the hallmark of an investigation done right. Oh, he's bringing up the report. Especially when Dr. Courtney Stevens put her name to it. Ah, she was the best of the best. I, I said that, I said that. Ooh, I'm so glad I made that connection. But what was it? This said, no wait. What did we get? Was it this? Yeah, this is the coroner report of the professor. And that was Courtney Stevens. And, uh, oh, so there's the connection with, with the professor and Courtney now. Ah, okay. So yeah, same, they're the same person. So, ho hold on a minute. What are you talking about? Who's Courtney Stevens? Ah, sorry. Got a bit carried away there. Stevens is Dr. Seitz's maiden name. I had a feeling. Her maiden name. So that was before she was married. Of course, yes. Silly me. It's Seitz now, isn't it? Stevens. I'm sure I've seen that name somewhere recently. Anyway, the point is, 
those were the great days of policing. Not like now. Sorry to interrupt, sir. But do you think you could change your statement to include that name? Well, yes. I don't see why not. She was Courtney Stevens back when I knew her, of course. A legendary coroner even then. So should I... Should I put her and him with each other? I'm not sure if it's too early to make the connection yet, but... She's saying the waxwork the man stole none do is the coroner. But... She's saying right there that Courtney Stevens... No, let's just- we have one more person to press, right? I already pressed him. Let's see if she has anything interesting to say, and then we'll figure it out. Hold it! Hold it! I've gotta ask, why have you brought that court into court with you? I've got a problem with that! Colonel Cobb, he's been growing back in the farm. Picked him off on the way into town. He's a proper nibbler, he is! Arrgh! Okay, calm down. Yes, the nibbling seems to be taking quite a while. Maybe you could wait until after the trial? Oh, I don't like the sound of that. Are you threatening me? You need kernels at times like these. Whenever I'm stomach big to the side, the kernels always point me in the right direction, see? Uh, you, you're talking about your cob of corn? It's sentient. Nibble novel, guilty novel. Nibble not guilty out. Nibble novel, guilty novel. <laughs> Nibble not guilty out. Okay, it'll go. Nibble novel, guilty novel. Nibble not guilty out. Nibble novel, guilty not novel. Nibble not guilty out. What, what, what's going on? Perhaps it's akin to fortune telling with flower petals like people do back home. I'm... Well, I'm glad we have a fortune teller um, on the jury. So Professor Herbrand's fate is to be decided by a cob of corn? Could you not at least wait until we've had more time to find the truth before deciding on the defendant's guilt? Oh, I don't know about that. Me tums awfully full already. Uh, ma amazing. I get it. Like a, a, a maze. Another word for corn. What, a type of corn. Okay, anyway. Okay, that was use useless. Okay, I'm going to try it. We're going to pit you against you. Objection. Objection! Those two statements clearly contradict each other. Good gracious. Two statements do you refer, counsel? So, juror number two. Oh gosh, me? Well, what can I do for you? I presume that you heard what juror number six said in this statement. It brought to light the maiden name of the coroner, Dr. Scythe, which in turn has revealed a connection that wasn't apparent before. Well, naturally, as a woman of society, I find such connections and relationships irresistible. I'm a Yuri and Yowie fangirl. But oh golly, I'm afraid I failed to see what you mean. Dr. Sight's maiden name is Stevens. And through that name, the coroner is very definitely linked to the waxwork of the killer. Indeed. The defense has evidence to prove it. My goodness! Evidence, you say? How, how utterly enthralling! She's into it. <laughs> Counsel, the court cannot overlook that last remark. I very much hope there is substance to your claim. You betcha. Of course, my lord. I would ask the court to look at this. The evidence that clearly links Dr. Scythe to the mass murderer known as the professor is... Uh, make sure I get the right thing. It's this, right? Let me just click on it. Yep, Courtney Stevens. The condemned uh, prisoner, the professor. Which is, of course, what the waxwork is uh, of. Take that! Take that, madam. I have here a certain autopsy report. Well, da -da 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 -da. I have here a certain autopsy report from ten years ago. A 10-year-old autopsy report? What relevance does that have? Oh, more than you know. It is, of course, from the autopsy of the person portrayed in the waxwork, the killer known as the Professor. What the dicks? The Professor's? But the man was a capital offender, so... That's right. This is the certification of death that was drawn up after the convict execution. The identity of the killer was never made public, so the report gives few details. But what's important is the name of the coroner who wrote it. Courtney... Courtney Stevens. Oh my! Courtney Stevens? 
Strike a light! Whatever that means. It appears that the professor's autopsy was conducted by Dr. Scythe ten years ago. And a few days ago, Mr. Drebber very deliberately stole the waxwork of the professor from Madame Tusfels. A waxwork that doesn't in fact resemble the victim, Mr. Asman, at all. And do you suppose there's some unsavory relationship between those events? So I wonder if they used the waxwork because maybe it was uh, Dr. Scythe ordered. Maybe Dr. Scythe wanted the waxwork for some reason. And again, maybe she's the one who wanted to hide the identity of the professor. Absolutely, I'm sure of it. There's no doubt in my mind that the professor case is at the heart of a link that we have yet to uncover. Between Dr. Courtney Scythe and Mr. Enoch Drebber. They're lovers, aren't they? No, no they're not. Hidden links, mysterious connections, secret relationships. This is all most extraordinary. Oh, my heart is fluttering a mile a minute. We're surely obliged now to explore this further. Yay. Got one. Right, right. We can't let this trial come to an end now. Not while there's this cloud of suspicion hanging over the yard. First coroner. It was like this in my day. But we're still here to uphold justice in the end. Yeah, cops on our side. So we have to get more than half, right? Because we have to tip it fully back. It's the professor. That's what thinks that frightful swindler and the coroner. Oh, wait. What is the, uh... What does the old guy say now? If the yard coroner is under suspicion, then we're not done here yet, are we? Clearly. Okay. That's right, we got this guy to change his, uh, his thingy. The presence of that piece of glass leaves me in little doubt that the waxwork was indeed inside the bird cage. Hmm. I feel like we have to pit his statement because we just unlocked it. Then again, I also haven't pressed him on this new statement. So I don't know if I should do that. Let me think. The presence of that piece of glass leaves me in little doubt that the waxwork was indeed inside that bird cage. So yeah, that's a given. I know this girl is claiming accusing someone without evidence. Um, he's not a proper job, is he? I won't have it. So I have to tell with her what she's even saying. Yeah, I'm not sure. Like I said, his his statement is obviously important since we got him to change his testimony. I'm going to press him on it quickly. Thank you for reconsidering your position, sir. Your words are misplaced, boy. My opinion is governed by logic and science and nothing else. Yes, yeah, science is where you should direct your words of gratitude. Ah. Trust the science. This is awkward. What's the matter with you? Too good to say some words of thanks to the mother of all academic subjects? Well, what is it about scientists, honestly? <laughs> okay, that did nothing. Maybe you have to pit him and the other guy together? It's, e uh, it's either pitting him against the girl or him against uh, the other jury number one, I feel. I'm not sure which it is. I mean, I've done good so far. I'm gonna try pitting him against him. Objection. I don't think so, the music didn't stop. Those two statements are fundamentally at odds with one another. Well, Mr. Foreman? Oh, there's to be a new Herlock Sholmes adventure published next month by the looks. My, my lord, the foreman of the jury isn't listening. Is that so? Well, I shall have to reserve myself a copy at the local news agent in that case. Miss Suzido, no one is listening to what I'm saying. He's just stupid, Rienosuke. Stupid! Perhaps this would be a good opportunity to have a rethink then, Mr. Narahodo. Uh-oh. Fear not, my learned friend. I heard every sorry word. Ugh. Sounds like I'm on the wrong track here. I'd better think again. I think the only other option is press these two, two, or pit these two, I mean. And if it's not that, then I'm missing something. Because I doubt it's this guy. Because 
we used his testimony to get the uh, policeman to change his. I think that's the only real reason. And what he's saying has nothing to do with what we're talking about anymore. It has to do with about the police. Objection. Okay, there we go. I said the wrong thing. Those two statements clearly contradict each other. Good gracious. To whose statements do you refer, counsel? If you could put down your corn for a moment, juror number five. No. I think not. Oh, you mean me? No, the, uh, juror number two. Who do you think I'm talking about? You pointed out that it's wrong to make an accusation without evidence. But the accusation that the waxwork model was inside the second birdcage on the day in question is not without supporting evidence, as the defense demonstrated to the juror sitting beside you. I'm too busy. Oh, is that right? I haven't been listening at all. <laughs> Would it be fair to say... You didn't follow the argument? I'm like five, what do you expect? I don't understand much besides Colonel Cobb, to be honest. Of course you don't. If I could interject here. Please do, sir. Now that this assertion of yours about the waxwork has been backed up by some solid evidence, it would be wrong of me as a man of science not to pursue the matter further. Okay, I got him on my side. Come on, corn girl. We just need you. I, I don't care if you know what's going on or not. Ah, well, me too then. Whatever. Sorry? If this brainy gentleman says he's right, then he must be. See? I, um... I wouldn't dream of going against Colonel Cor or anyone who's got nothing between the ears. <laughs> ears of corn, that is. <laughs> Okay, I don't care. I don't care if you know what's going on. Yay! We got him. Success! If you can call it that. Thank you, Council. That'll do. Yes. Oh boy, I literally have like one health bar left. <laughs> so, as a result of the summation examination, Jude's overall leaning has changed. Two jurors now call guilty. Against four, we call not guilty. Accordingly, the court has failed to reach a consensus at this time. And the trial must continue. We... We did it. Again. Somehow they keep working in our favor. Oh, well done, Mr. Norihoto. Another wonderful victory. Yeah. Success. Now that that nonsense is out of the way, let's get back to the real trial. From the wax work of the despicable professor. Uses a body double for the victim in this quite extraordinary case. I must say, it's extremely hard to believe the assertion could possibly be true. However, it would appear that it does at least warrant further investigation. It's the wax work of the professor that links Mr. Drever and Dr. Scythe. And I'm convinced that there's a special significance to that link. I don't know what you're hoping to prove, lad. I really don't. The truth. Oh, there we go. The truth, sir. By using evidence and testimony. Humph. Poppycock. If the court is to delve deeper into the alleged involvement of the waxwork in this case, then the prosecution calls for the owner of the model to be summoned as a witness. Ooh. Madam Tuspell. We haven't seen her in a while. The owner? Madam Tussfels. Oh shoot! I, I, I didn't have time to comb my hair. I, I I really thought that Lord Van Zykes would object to this whole line of inquiry. Guess not. And that worries me. Very well, I concur. Make arrangements for Madam Tussfels to appear as a witness with immediate effect. Listen carefully, my learned friend. Oh, uh, yes? You should know that you are on the brink of opening Pandora's box. Okay, thanks for that. The court should now adjourn for 45 minutes. During that time, the prosecution will summon the new witness and prepare her for taking the stand. Okay, if, if we if we hit a to be continued here, I might uh go a little bit longer. I've been recording for a less than, a little less than 40 minutes. 
Madame Tusville is yes. I shall see to it at once, my lord. Is that it? Up, oh, and that is it. To be continued. Save your current progress? Sure. You can go a little bit longer, maybe I'll just start the next part. 24th of October, 11.53 AM, the Old Bailey, Defendants enter the Chamber. Ah, the Knight Errant himself. Oh, have you been watching from the gallery, Mr. Sholmes? Kinda. I've been on the edge of my seat the entire time. With my bag of popcorn, courtroom trials are fascinating affairs, as a spectator at least. I'm glad you've been enjoying yourself. <laughs> hey, Brain, what's up? I... I have to ask. What on earth is going on? It makes no sense. What's this professor business all about? He doesn't look like any professor I've ever met before. Who even is he? Ah, of course. Yeah, I don't think we've talked to him about it at all. Because they've been two separate cases. You were in Germany already ten years ago. Ah, so you never even heard of the guy. Yes, the professor. When I discovered he was the one who'd been abducted, a sense of foreboding stirred within me. But who knew the monster would come knocking at your door? My heartfelt sympathies. <laughs> Just kidding, I don't care. As it turns out, Lord Van Zyke is even more intimately tied to this case than any of us realize, isn't he? That's right. The professor killed his brother? Yes, how true. His great friend from University in the Dark. And now, Waxwork, the killer who took his esteemed brother's life, makes an appearance too. I imagine even the shrewd Mr. Reaper failed to foresee that kick in the teeth. An extraordinary move on my part, my dear fellow. I'm sorry, on your part, my dear fellow, to throw that in front of the man. You make it sound deliberate. I mean, yes, it was totally deliberate. I totally meant to do that. I totally meant to make the connection. I can't help feeling that this professor case is really very puzzling. Oh yes? In what particular manner? Well, there's Mr. Drever, Dr. Scythe, and Lloyd Van Zykes. Yeah, they've all got connections. It seems that everybody in the trial has a link to the case somehow. Yes. In fact, I alone am not a member of the set. Congratulations. Though that leaves me as an empty set, all alone with no intersection to any other. There, there. Give him some head pats, Ryanosuke. Who's that? Is that Gregson? Excuse me? Oh, hello there. Dr. Scythe! Gadzooks! Ah, Dr. Quitney Scythe. Nee Stevens. Good day to you. Hello, Sholmes. That was very shrewd of you. What in particular, pray? You, re you requested that ten-year-old autopsy report from Gregson, didn't you? Yes, that's true. That was all. Uh, that was all Sholmes. So he gets a thumbs up for that one. Why would you assume such a thing? Because Gregson told me, you imbecile. Oh. To think it's been ten years. Ten years in the laboratory, wielding my scalpel. Ah, oh, she's so cool though. She's cold and calculating. And a murderer, or at least an accomplice. I smell of nothing but corpses and disinfectant. A, pl a policeman on the jury had a lot to say about you as it happened, Dr. Scythe. And I've accused you of being complicit in what happened. You're no shit. I'm hoping that you will take the stand and tell the truth about what really happened. That certainly won't be possible. Why not? Lord Van Zyke won't be summoning me as a witness. Lord Strongheart has forbidden it. Lord Strongheart? Okay. Is he at the, is he at the heart of this? The Pandora's box you were warned about is the Professor case. But please don't make the mistake of thinking you'll get any information about it out of me. 
but attempting to hide from the truth. That's cowardice. You tell you tell us, Suzuto. I've always fought crime in the way I see fit. I have no regrets, none at all. And that's all I came here to say. Good day to you. So, <laughs> good day to you. As Mike already said, bye. Okay, that's that's concerning. I'm sure there's got to be some way to get around the stand. She mentioned it too. Miss Pandora's box. Whatever does it all mean? There's really no cause for concern, I assure you. When the trial resumes, the meaning will come all too apparent, whether you'd like it to or not. Huh? Now then, I believe it's almost time. I must make my way back to the public gallery. The edge of my seat awaits. I think maybe you're enjoying yourself a little too much there, bud. Ah yes, one word of warning before I go. If in the course of the trial this afternoon, you perceive even a shadow of doubt about the truth. Don't let it out of your sight. Pursue it like a dog with a bone. Like a dog in heat. I mean, what? To the bitter end, you understand. Do not falter. Whatever may come to pass. Okay, I feel those are important words. Alright, I understand. Thank you. Now be gone. Good. I shall make myself scarce then. I put as a bar of karma earlier. Sure, I shall be gnawing on that as you gnaw away at the truth. Is this gonna be imp is this gonna be important? Watch well, it's just like chocolate bar has been added to your evidence. <laughs> what did that warning from Mr. Sholmes really mean, I wonder? Especially the bit about whatever may come to pass. Those words definitely seem foreboding. It's time for the final chapter then. I'm determined to find the truth. No matter what. It's interesting, they keep calling it the final chapter. Making it seem like it's, but I know there's two more. 24th of October, 1240 PUM. The old Bailey courtroom. Yeah, maybe I'll stop here. I know it's a bit on the shorter side, but I don't have as much time to record and edit and stuff anyway because I work retail and we're like a week away from Christmas. So like I have, I have like crazy hours. And so not that I'm purposefully making this short, but I figure it'll, it'll allow me to get this edited and, you know, find time to record and all that stuff. Plus it just seems like a good time. I want to go a little bit further, but, but, um, you know, I figure... Might as well stop here before we get into the actual like meat of the trial. Again, it's getting good. I feel like I basically this episode was mainly just the uh, jury, what you call it, the summation examination. Those are fun though. I enjoyed it. It's a fun little mechanic. You know, it's fun like I'm kind of uncovering and kind of you know pitting pitting the different jurors against each other. It's it's a fun. It's fun. I enjoy I enjoy doing it. And yeah, now let's see what happens. So who are we calling? Oh yeah, Madam Tuspells. So let's see what she has to say. At one point, I suspected her of maybe being in on it because instead of the um, the wax figure, quote unquote, being stolen, I thought maybe she, you know, she said it was stolen, but maybe that she, you know, willingly gave it over for this uh, deceit, but it doesn't seem like it. I guess it's still possible, but maybe we'll be able to find something that uh, incriminates uh, Scythe further, and then she'll have no choice but to take the stand. Who knows? But I'm excited. You know, I, you know I like Madame Tuspel, so I'm excited to see more of her. But that'll do it for this episode. So thank you guys so much for watching. Go ahead and hit the like button and the notification bell. Subscribe to the channel. And of course, um, share the video on the channel with your friends, family, and loved ones. I really do appreciate you guys, and I'll see you next time. So take care, and bye bye